Welcome along to episode 778 of The Mill Bar. Jason Forrest here with you as ever. And coming up on the show this week, Sophie McCartney, comedian. We're letting us know how stressful kids' parties can be and how we can improve that with a bit of help from Peter Express. We were hearing from the team at the Ultimate Ladies' Night about the amazing work they've been doing and how they're putting Wolverhampton on the map across the UK. Keith Harrison from the Stafford Gate has let us know about a load of their shows. However... We'll be finding out about one of their shows in particular when we have a natter with Sean Walsh. John Goff let us know about the support for the Goff Group and uh, the fact that they've been helping out with funding this year's JW Hunt Cup. We talked to the team from uh, the show Dogfight. Uh, we'll be hearing from Big Three Productions. I nipped along to their rehearsal. We'll be having a bit of a natter with the team from Starstruck about their production of Joseph, which is on this week. I went along to where they were getting together to learn their lines. And we'll have a natter with Muscom as well, as they have Rock of Ages on stage too. That's all on the way on the show this week. Welcome to the Milk Bar. 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 Uh, welcome to the milk bar. Uh. Now, when it comes to entertaining the kids, a kids' party will actually beat the stress of the nine to five when it comes to uh, all the pressure that you're under to make sure you get everything right and the goodie bags have got the right things in them. Uh, to tell us more about how we can sort of temper the uh, the stress around these sort of things, I'm joined by comedian Mum of Two, writer of Tired and Tested, Sophie McCartney. How are you doing? You're right. I'm good, thanks. You know, I yeah, I a little tired and tested around the edges, as always, really. But I've got a lot of coffee on board. Um, but but yeah, the birth the birthday parties that that's a big one, isn't it? It's I think, do you know, the most stressful thing about parenting is organising your kid's birthday party, and <laughs> that that sounds awful, doesn't it? And it's it's one of the most stressful, and it's one of the most difficult. And you know, but I have birthed all of my children, and you know, I still find that actually planning the birthday party is more painful. And I don't really know, you know, what that says about me as a person well, or a parent. I, th- I think there's probably the flashbacks to the actual birthing <laughs> process itself as well in yeah. finding that. Yeah, possibly, quite possibly. Um, I think it's frowned upon, though, to um, to take any drugs at a child's birthday party, though. So, you know, the, when in childbirth, you have a little bit more support there, don't you? Yeah, the, the gas so, and air yeah. Yeah, yeah. is not an option when you're just yeah, trying you to get the trifle you, sorted. You can't just be there, you know, sucking the helium out of the flamingo balloon, can you? So. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, the, the panic starts to set in sometimes 12 weeks before the big day. And oh. uh, say so with, with the sort of cost you're looking at here, uh, there's... The, 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 got to be ways of doing this and making it work without having to sort out 53 layers on a past the parcel oh uh, do you know what? well there's been some research done into this and actually when i saw this research it was done by pizza Food express and when i saw this research i actually felt really validated as a parent <laughs> as to my own experiences because for a little while you know when you've had an awful experience you think am i the only one am i the absolute only killjoy who's just sitting there hating all of this and then i saw this research and it's like it's like four out of five parents say that it is just the most stressful part of their entire parenting journey and um and you know the there are so many things that we can do to alleviate this because I think as parents, we're already stressed. There's a lot going on, isn't there, on a day-to-day basis. And, you know, mm-hmm. having a kid's birthday party should not top this. And more people in the research said that it was more stressful than their day jobs. Can you imagine that? You've got these really <laughs> like high-powered lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh I'm just trying to sue this big corporation but also I've got my kids birthday party and they're just rocking in a corner because of that so I think that the answer is you've just got to outsource this haven't you you've just got to put mm-hmm. this now into the hands of somebody else because you know a lot of parents we're not expert party planners you know I think you know me personally one, I think one of my main responsibilities is just to keep my children alive on a day-to-day basis and I think, you know make maybe impart some wisdom somewhere along along mm-hmm. the way um but it's not it's not making a perfect birthday party happen and i've now come to the conclusion that you know i just have to let other people do this and you can you can do these pizza express pizza making parties and the kids go and you, you don't actually have to really do anything you can just sit in the corner and have a peroni and just watch all of this unfold as somebody else supervises your kids while they make pizzas and then they they do the party bags i'm all full of party bags this is this is a revelation <laughs> for me party bags in my house because I always forget about them they're always the last thing that mm. I think on to do and um and so generally then what happens is there's a panic there's a party bag panic and they just get any old tat thrown in that I found around the house you know some kids have got you know a like a, a bit of pasta from the fridge a bit of dry pasta thrown in with you know a couple of other things I've managed to source from the floor so yeah everything's taken care of you don't even have to, you don't have to tidy up you can just leave you can just walk <laughs> away from the chaos and go my work here is done and, yeah. and then go home and forget about it and for me that is 
now the way forward for party planning for my kids, 100%. Because, I mean, the, the, the cleanup is a big part of it, post-party cleanup, real problem. Mm. Uh, the no-shows that you end up having issues with, uh, accommodating yeah. everybody's requirements when it comes down to the dietary side of it too. Yeah, Absolute nightmares. Every single one of these things uh, you could hand on to somebody who's used to dealing with that every day of the week. Who Who is qualified? This is this is their job. This is their livelihood. And, and you know, it's so important to make sure that you've got all the allergen information right. For, and when you're dealing, you know, if you're trying to cater for a kid's party at home, you've got 30 children and you know there's various different dietary requirements I'm quite an anxious parent I really worry about everything I overanalyze I overthink and so if somebody has said to me you know that their child has a specific allergy even though I might know I've sourced this particular food and I'll, I'll, I'll know that you know I haven't put anything in it that I shouldn't have put in it and the, the worry is that I'll have forgotten and I'll just really absentmindedly you mm-hmm. know just gone and put a jar of peanut butter in something when I shouldn't have done and then I'll live in anxiety for this so knowing that yeah that I'm out of my own home and this is you know in in trusted adults hands because i don't think i am a trusted adult even though i'm <laughs> a parent i'm not a trusted adult um and that they can do all of this for me it's just a weight it's it's a weight off isn't it it's a it's one less thing to do on a parent's many many well huge list of many things to do yeah no preparing the food no getting it right no worrying about whether that peanut butter snuck in when it shouldn't have done exactly the, the, you've got uh the venue already cleared up if you go with the likes of pizza express because that's the thing did too isn't it well do you know what so yeah they clean everything up afterwards but so this is what i've found in the past when i've been stupid enough to have my parties at home with my kids <laughs> you spend the whole day tidying your house and now this is just the aesthetics for the parents who come and drop their children off at your house because the kids who come they don't care what it looks like and it's going to be trash within 10 minutes but you will spend forever just making your house look you know instagram perfect and you know in reality there's just a room in your house where you've just picked up all of the rubbish and scooped it and thrown it away and just closed the door on that for another day just then for 30 kids to come into your house and run around with balloon animal swords and and you know absolutely trash the place and then yeah you have to spend another day tidying up afterwards it's not worth it we've all got better things to do with our lives haven't we really Absolutely. Absolutely. at the end of the day. Yeah, you've got enough trouble managing the guest list and making sure everyone's going to turn up. Oh, that, that bit kind of stays with you, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's political, the guest list. And there's always a fear, and my daughter's great for this. So I make her write out the list of everybody who she wants to attend. And I say, you know, the list is final now, sweetheart. Once the invites have gone out, that is it. We can do no more. And then probably a day before the party, she'll turn around to me with at least three other children who weren't included on the list, crying her eyes out that she wants them to come to her party. And I'm like, I can't invite them, darling, because their parents, they're going to know. They're going to know that their child did not make the original cut of children who were invited to the party and there is no bigger social anxiety as a parent than having to call that child's mom the day before and be like oh don't suppose they want to come to the birthday party tomorrow because then they, they just know they weren't the first choice child and that's just very awkward on the school yeah, playground yeah we have a lot of that yeah not easy it's a bit tricky to sort out but as it when it comes to though i think a pizza party it's going to suit pretty much everyone because there'll be all sorts of options gluten-free all the vegan and vegetarian requirements exactly. that people have See, my daughter, my daughter likes pizza, but she doesn't like cheese. So, which is, you know, to be fair, a fundamental part of pizza, right? It's, so, it's you know, essential, yeah. It's quite essential, but not for her, not for her. So, <laughs> so you know, if, you, if you've given her a pizza making party, she can just sit there, just put the sauce on bread and away she goes. And she's delighted with that. What a great day out she's had. So, yeah, <laughs> I think it, it caters for all of the many, many pick eaters. Yeah, it's a nice, simple, safe way of doing it. You haven't got to worry about it. Somebody else has. Best bit is, as you say, you can sit down with a Peroni and a pepperoni and oh, enjoy I love it. That. That, that, hey, that should be Pizza Express new tagline, shouldn't it? Get that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Where are the details we can go to to find out more about this report? Make sure we're ticking the stresses off and making sure they never happen again. Sure. So you can go to pizzaexpress.com and there you can make an inquiry as to how you can organize your child's birthday party if you just so happen to be passing your local pizza express just pop in and there's going to be lots of people there who'll be able to happily talk you through the process and while you're there you can have your pizza and a pepperoni because you've got to test the merch haven't you before you know commit in i think it's important and if they let you build it yourself fair. even better it'd be brilliant even but... better i don't know I wonder, they, I wonder if they do it for adults i'm not sure if they you know it's kids pizza making parties i wonder if the grown-ups can get in on the action as well that'd be nice wouldn't it? I've, I've just had my 40th that'd be nice <laughs> yeah check check find out see how it works you may not get the goodie bag at the end there it's, oh uh, yeah. Could be the downside. <laughs> so McCartney, writer of Tired and Tested, comedian, mother of two, and clearly a Pizza Express aficionado. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.
Now, the final of the JW Hunt Cup takes place once more at Molyneux. It's on Tuesday, the 21st of May, a 7.30 kickoff, and Wolverhampton Sporting take on Litchfield City, the current holders of the title from last year. There's been a brand new sponsor for the competition this year. It is the Goff Group. John Goff joins you now to tell me more. Hello, sir. Jason, hello. Good to talk to you. Good to have a catch up and great to see you supporting a fantastic competition, which is in its 98th year. Yeah, it, it is fantastic. And uh, it all, I'm really pri- feel privileged to be able to be part of it, actually, ha- having learned such a lot about it in the last uh, few months. Um, it all came. Uh, I, I was given this opportunity, really, by um, a colleague of mine at Wolves for many years. Richard Skiro um, thought that, um, that that they needed a new sponsor, and he thought that we would be a good fit uh, <laughs> uh, with with uh, JW Hunt Cup. So I I um, had a meeting, and we 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 got on, and I, I felt it was a good fit. So mm-hmm. absolutely, I mean. Today. It's, I mean, it's a competition yes, which has been running and supporting the Beacon Centre of the Blinds for so many years. Actually, I was with Richard Skiro last week, and uh, because he's a retired club secretary from Molyneux, and we're having a, a bit of a natter about the whole thing. And of course, Alex Hamill puts so much work into this, as well as the rest of the team, who do a brilliant job of bringing the whole league together. And uh, it's a, it, it just sort of fits with the ethos of the golf group, doesn't it? Well, if I can just... When I, when I delved into it, uh, one of the things Richard said to me, he said, well, it might work really well. Their centenary is in, in uh, 2026. And although I, and as, I, we're 125 year old, years old as a business mm-hmm. in um, a six months time. So, so we're, we were formed in 1900 and uh, they were formed in 1926, but the, it, it gets even better for, for us because that they started with the Chillington Tool Company. I had long chats with Alex, who I found very interesting and, and obviously devoted to the, to the whole project. Um, and we found out that the, the, the gentleman, Mr. Hunt, had a business in Horsley Fields called, called the Chillington Tool Company. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather, also in Horsley Fields, started William Goff in 1900 having um so the business is both started within a few hundred yards of each other um a beginning of the last century so that gave it a little bit more uh me um had a sort of family feel about it for us mm-hmm. uh, and then and, and then uh, then alex brought me some pictures of of various former players and uh, historical context to it and um it, and then he brought me a program of the 1946-47 final of the JW Hunt Cup, which was between um, Snapes and Wolverhampton Technical College. And my dad was right half in the final, <laughs> which, which I just I, I'd no I had no idea about. So it's it's it's, it's just tremendous, and and not, but more important than that, it's a great grassroots competition for our area but beacon center um having been um going since 1875 i think uh alex and his team uh, have do a tremendous fantastic job in raising this money for them and i mean i think they've raised about three hundred and fifty thousand pounds so far mm-hmm. for for a beacon center people with um, visual impairment which which uh, is a very very worthy and cause uh, and i just felt that to be asked to help was a privilege and it was a, for me w- w- with the background uh, the we're local with wolverhampton it's a wolverhampton charity which i've always been involved we tend to think local to be truthful or mm-hmm. we employ a lot of local people uh, the business is uh, doing well. It's it, it's it, it's in doing some tremendous work. We've got tremendous people in the company, and the people of, of some of my colleagues at Goffs, they they're all footballers, and I've brought them. In, the directors of the, the of the of the business are all involved as well, as not just me. 
uh, with this um, project. So it's been um, a fantastic privilege to be asked to be truthful, and mm-hmm. and I think we're just trying to will uphold the traditions of of the cup uh, and help to support Alex and his team the best we can. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm really looking forward to seeing Molyneux on. I spend a lot of time there, as you probably know, mm-hmm. um, but to see a, a, di- a different team in front of me um, to support. I'm, well, I don't know who I'm going to support, really, but probably both. Well, I've got Wolverhampton it, Sports, and they've got Wolverhampton in the name. Litchfield, defending champions. So uh, it, it's a, it's an interesting one to, to go for. I, I think uh, Wolverhampton Sporting, I'm not sure whether there's some history on their, their lineup and whether they've had a different name in the past, but I was looking through the records and I, I couldn't spot them having uh, achieved a status in the final previously. Uh, we could do with Alex on the mm-hmm. line uh, to tell us uh, uh, exactly where we are. Oh, yeah. he, know, he knows the history going all the way back. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting game and, and hard fought. And I mean, two teams who are very keen to lift that trophy themselves and uh, doing it in the the wonderful Molyneux Stadium. I know is always an absolute buzz for the teams, having worked on the event back in the day when I worked down there on the uh, Tannoy and uh, worked the event a number of times. So uh, it is uh, you know, a, a fantastic one to be part of. The atmosphere is electric. And just for the fact that uh, so many people are down there to support, it shows how well loved this cup is throughout our area. And again, it, it, this, it just echoes the the brilliant support that the Goff Group are giving. And uh, you know, it, it, to be thankful that you're there to able to be uh, to, to help with the, the the funding on such a brilliant competition. Well, I say you know, we're not in it for, for just for the short term. I've said to Alex, we'll as long as we can, we'll we'll help out because it's it, it, it's it's. Uh, we like football. Um, if you ever came to our offices, you'd find that out. You know, uh, football is <laughs> most of them, most walls in some cases. So um, and with wolves, um, amateur football. I, I played um, for a Claregate, believe it or not, for a mm-hmm. long time in the Premier League. Um, so I, although I never got to the dizzy heights of the JW Hunt Cup, but, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to it. Well, maybe if they start a seniors competition, you'll have to see what you can do there. That would be interesting to see. Oh, okay. God, shows. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, not, uh, don't where can we so. find out more about uh, what you're doing with the Goff Group at the moment? Have you, are you on the socials? I don't think we are, but I'm sure that um, where we are, we we are fundamentally in the public sector construction. So uh, our markets, we do a tremendous amount of work for the NHS and hospitals. We build uh, schools and uh, alter schools, build extensions of schools, and we defence contractors as well. So we tend to, uh, and we we work for local authorities. But that is tends to be where we we, we uh, operate. So um, when we got some really interesting projects at the moment, really mm-hmm. interesting projects. Well, I know you like to share news of those through the, the press teams that likes the Express and Star as well, if anything does come along. So keep checking for what's going on there. See the great work the Goff Group are doing, employing people throughout our area, and in this case, also helping out supporting the JW Hunt Cup. As I say, the final takes place at Molyneux. It is Tuesday, the 21st of May with a 7.30 kickoff. I know that as many of the supporters that will be down there for each team, they'd love to see people coming in as neutrals just to cheer on both sides. As I say, John's already said he's going to be a neutral on the night and and uh, see everybody do well. John Goff of the Goff Group, thank you for joining us and have a great time at Molyneux on Tuesday. Thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, you may be used to his comedic talents, his acting, and even a few quick steps in his time, but you won't have seen Sean Walsh do Shakespeare before. At least that is not until the 21st of June through to the 7th of July when he's at the Stafford Gatehouse. How are you doing, sir? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Yes, looking forward to uh, to my debut on, on stage. Well, not on stage, acting on stage. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, you've you've done plenty of acting in your time. The comedy is a uh, uh, the stage is a permanent home. In fact, you've got a tour up and down the country, which is going to put you back at the forefront of people's minds. But uh, for Shakespeare, what prompted you to take up this gig? Your agent obviously made you an offer you couldn't refuse. You, yes, I was f- forced, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and now I'm now going to get a six bedroom house in Mayfair. Um, no. I, uh, I well, do you know what? At first, I was absolutely terrified at, at the idea of doing it, but um, I spoke to I spoke to a few people in the biz, should we say, and um, 
and they really encouraged me to do it and talk and they and they really talked about what a fantastic festival it is the oh yeah you know the shape the stafford shakespeare festival and i know various people that have performed uh, at the festival and um yeah and now i'm i'm really excited yeah, and it's a, it, it's a fantastic event. I mean, more than 30 years of brilliant Shakespeare yes. in yeah. Stafford. I mean, whether they've performed it at the cast in the past or uh, the, the just amazing setting of the gatehouse itself yes. is where you find yourself this year. Uh, it's a, a brilliant run. And this is an interesting take on this because you, you have uh, Malvolio. Now, I can never pronounce the names of half the Shakespeare characters. Don't yeah, worry, you... I'm, with, I'm with you, so don't worry. Yes, Malvolio. <laughs> I got my uh, yes, got my tongue around that. And it's Twelfth Night, a Cornish tale. Yes, it is. It's Twelfth Night. I, I do you know what? Um, full disclosure: I do a podcast with uh, the wonderful Jack D. For any dog owners out there, called Oh My Dog. But me and my, I, I was talking to Jack about it, and I um, I kept on referring to to it as the the Twelfth Night. Mm-hmm. And Jack had to correct me and say, "Why, why do you keep calling it the Twelfth Night? You're not get. It's not like you go to the West End and see the cats. It's Twelfth <laughs> Night. So, um, you know, I, I can't even get my head around the title, let alone the dialogue. <laughs> but here we are. No, uh, so I, yes, it's it's daunting at first when you, you know, when you start reading it. But actually, I think that." Um, you know, Shakespeare's not to be read. It's to be, you know, it's to be watched and it's to be performed. And and actually, once you start saying these things out loud, you know, how obviously, you know, Will, the, the, the writer of the piece, Will Shakespeare, he knows what he's doing, this guy. Very up and coming. <laughs> I think people are going to love him. But, you know, it really, it all clicks together. And it's, um, I, I really, I thought I'd be having to do a lot of translating and treating it like a new language. But actually, once you... Once you get it out there, as I say, it clicks into place. Well, I, I think that kind of works with comedy anyway, because it, you do say some random things when you're a comedian, whatever happens, don't you? So it, yes. it, 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 you don't necessarily conform to <laughs> to any any known standards to get a giggle. So I, I should think yes. you, you're probably one of the best place to come at this. Well, I'm lucky that, um, you know, M- Malvolio has certain chunks in and is part of the story where he is directing the audience. Um, sorry, he is speaking to the audience directly. Mm-hmm. So I'm quite lucky in that, you know, that is what my job is, is to, you know, as, as a comedian, we don't have the fourth wall at all. We mm-hmm. That's broken before we get on stage. <laughs> and we, you know, we address the crowd directly. So it's quite handy for me to, you know, when I get to those those bits in, in Malvolio's role that uh, I have kind of almost, well, 20 years I can't believe I'm saying that of experience <laughs> to, to do it, but it's um it's a lot of, it really is a lot of fun, and it's a fun you know it's it's regarded as one of if not Shakespeare's funniest plays you know it's 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 fantastic it's a romantic comedy it's extremely farcical, and Malvolio is a is a character that gets pulled emotionally in lots of different lots of different ways, and so it's such a fun character to get stuck into. And, and what's it like coming to this as the the non Shakespearean in here? Because you've got some some great colleagues who are you know, at the top of the game, the same as you are, but in slightly different areas. Yes, I mean, I'm you know I, I'll be the the person that's not done any. Um, well, you know, I've acted, but I'm it's it's been primarily you know in front of the camera. So yes, I will be the one joining the cast, um, joining the wonderful Natalie Anderson and Molly Windsor, Molly Windsor, sorry, and. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, it's I'm the thing is, I would say this. Yes, people have been surprised when I've told them that I'm <laughs> going to be playing Malvolio in Shakespeare, and I understand that, of course I do. At the same time, I have been performing for for as I say nearly 20 years in front of audiences and and for most of those evenings making <laughs> most of not all it has to be said in that 20 years but most of most of those evenings having the joy of making those people laugh and so it's not too it's not you know it's not completely completely alien i'm not well, so about to i i see it as very surgery. you if you if if you're going to line someone up for this who hadn't done it before it's exactly you who you would put in the in the in this place you know it well, it makes sense and and i think stafford's in for a treat you're going to bring the best mavolio yes. they've they've seen it's certainly in 2024 well, 
Let's. <laughs> he's hoping. You, can you be? Can you be a critic? Can I pay yeah. you to be a critic, please? That would be I, marvelous. I am there for the press night, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Oh, good, good. I look forward <laughs> to seeing you. <laughs> but I say it's a, a, a good event. I mean, but so, alongside that, I say you've got to learn the script for Shakespeare, and you've got your uh, stand-up oh. tour on the way as well. So your head's a busy place. My head is always. Oh my God, my head is always a busy place. I think um, the stand-up. You know the, the the you know the main difference between the main difference is of course with stand up comedy I get to go and say what it is that I think <laughs> and when you're performing anyone's play you are you're going and saying what someone else thinks or you know certainly what the character thinks so that's the main that's the main difference the stand up is um yeah well it's a completely different beast <laughs> but both we'll see I mean I you know I love the thing about a play is that you get to collaborate and you get to work with other people for the whole, you know, and um, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to, is to, to working with Molly and working with Natalie and uh, and putting on the best 12th night we possibly can. Absolutely. And then you're probably going to try and blag a gig on there. Because, I mean, you deserve a BAFTA as well for the stuff that you do. So this is, you can't get an Olivier for this one, can you? Or can you? Can we line you up for one of them? I think we should. I think we should all calm down. <laughs> Just one step at a time. So, <laughs> have you worked out which is your funniest line to deliver in the show yet? Well, I don't know about funniest line, but I think you know, uh, Malvolio is a very stiff character, very regimented, and you know, um, there's no. Sp I don't think I'm giving away spoilers, but he. And there'll be a lot of people that won't know Twelfth Nights, but if they do, you know, they'll know that Malvolio finds this letter on the ground and that opens up a different side of him that we've yet to have seen. And um, I think that's really when the fun begins is when his uh, emotions are slightly are given a bit of a shake. Mm -hmm. Well, I, say, I, I think you're also taking responsibility here for bringing people who may not have come to see something like Twelfth Night to see the show because of your name attached to it. And I think the, the, a great responsibility rests on your shoulder here. You could be educating people. I, I don't... How do you feel about that? <laughs> I well, when you start putting it like that, that very notion terrifies me. <laughs> um, I try not to think about that. No, no I, you know, we want to we want to play this to as many people as we as we can. We want as many people to enjoy this version of Twelfth Night. We're working with the director, uh, Sean Turner, who who directed one of my favourite uh, plays that I've seen, play, pl the play that goes wrong, uh, which I've seen twice, actually, in the West End. Mm -hmm. Huge, massive, hysterical It is farce. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm very, you know, it's, it's wonderful that I now get to work with Sean, and um, I'm sure with his kind of vision and his sense of comedy, I think that hopefully... Together as a team, myself, Sean, Molly and Natalie will be able to make a, a really entertaining version. And I would say this, you know, you don't, I know, look, I'm like, I think most people in the sense that probably the idea of a Shakespeare play to me wouldn't necessarily be my kind of first go to for, for, for a night of entertainment. But actually, I'm, I, you know, I've come round and, and I think, even if that the idea of that doesn't necessarily excite you, I promise you, come, you won't need a translator. You won't mm -hmm. need someone there going, what does that mean? <laughs> it, it really, once the performers get behind it, it really kind of, you know, it really tells that story. Yeah, it's, it's the way that, I mean, the actions translate it for you. It's like the Babel fish in Hitchhikers, you know. It, the, the, the brainwave patterns are there That's because it. of what you can see on stage. That's it. That's exactly it. And our job is just to bring um, bring it to life and and uh and yes and, and and be as funny as we can with it well we have no doubt you're going to be hugely amusing that is going to be a bit of a treat uh the show itself as we say is from the 21st of june through to the 7th of july gatehousetheatre.co.uk to book your tickets or give the box office a call on 01785 619080 the shakespeare festival is always amazing they do a brilliant job of it such amazing staging supported by staffordshire university it is well worth checking out if it's not your thing and you just want to see Sean Walsh do his thing on stage, it's going to be worth it for that, let alone the fact yeah. that you're getting some Shakespeare thrown in for good measure. Yeah. Uh, give us a quick plug for your tour as well. I know you're not doing too many local gigs round by us, but that tour is going to get extended at some point. So where do we find you? Well, that, do you know what? It's been extended enough, bless you, and <laughs> it's finally coming to an end after being on the road for, what, I think, about two years. So back from the bed um, is, 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 is finished, I think. Well, just about to, to end, and I'll be back at some point 
hopefully next year with a new show called um, This Is Torture. Okay, well, it's, that should be interesting. Uh, whether you're reflecting upon your time in Shakespeare at that point, we will see. But where do we find you on the socials? Uh, Sean Walsh, that's S E A double N Walsh on Instagram. Yeah. And, and Walsh with an A, just so as you know as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sure. Lovely to have an out with you. Really, I'm looking forward to seeing the show for all the right Bless reasons. You. And uh, we will see you in June in Stafford. Thank you so much. <laughs> Big Three Productions are at the Rose Theatre in Rugeley from the 30th of May through to the 1st of June. They've got Dogfight on stage, which is the reason why some of these guys are already dressed in army fatigues as we have our chat. I'll let them introduce themselves. Who have we got over here? Uh, my name's Eve and I play Marcy in Dogfight. My name's Andy and I play Boland. I'm James, I'm playing Eddie Birdlace. I'm Georgia and I play Stevens. And I'm Cheryl and I'm playing Rose Fenny. So, uh, lead roles, who's lead roles? There we go, these two over here. <laughs> and uh, obviously a big show for you two because you've got a lot to get through at the time. And uh, you, you get some rather unfortunate things implied about your character, don't you? You're not it implies not being the best looking of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and uh, that's, that's, that's cruel and unkind, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's part of the story, though. It is, and that's why she's very gutted to have, uh, you know, have been deceived by Eddie and... He looks the type, though, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Just give that vibe, do I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's a great song to, uh, you know, throughout the show. Uh, you get some brilliant uh, songs to sing, and the duets that you two guys get to do are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's been really fab to sing with James as well. He's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what, what is your favourite bit of the show? Um, I actually quite enjoyed the Nothing Short of Wonderful song, because mm-hmm. it's a bit hectic and going through dresses. Um, and, you know, the scenes that James, there's a lot of... Um, scenes where it's just the two of us and it's just quite sort of natural talking and I quite like that you know mm-hmm. so yeah but, but great characters play that such feeling emotion and uh, you know re- really want, want a great one to, to be able to share with the, the audience yeah I mean obviously the the big song in the show is called Pretty Funny so um, yeah that's very emotional and I'm sure girls can relate to that in one way or another you know mm-hmm. Next up, tell us about you and uh, what you're actually doing. How does your part of the story get told? Yeah, so I am Stevens, a fellow Marine of the Three Bs. Um, I'd say he's quite a cheeky chappy, mm-hmm. um, my character, and I've sort of taken in, taken in like he's a bit of an alcoholic. <laughs> um, yeah, so I play that. I also play Mama, Rosie's mum, in the show, which is a really nurturing role, um, and you sort of... Can, like the, the relationship's really nice between the two characters. Yeah. And it, it is a play about relationships as well, isn't it? Yeah. You get to explore a lot of the characters that way. Definitely, and I think for us, seeing the relationship between Rose and Birdbase, it's just beautiful. So it's a real treat for the audience. OK, we've been you up. You've got to do some serious work here. How's it going to go? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I guess, um, yeah, we're, we're all really excited for the show. And I think it, it's been a it's a, it's, a, it's a real breath of fresh air, this show, I think. I think compared to a lot of typical musicals like Grease, for example, this is, this is a lot more hard-hitting, I'd say. And the characters emotionally are quite complicated. There's quite a big arc that all the characters go through and how they develop. And... Yeah, it, it, it's been really fun and it's been a real challenge, I think, for me in terms of it's, it's a role that I don't typically play. So it's been nice to sort of be a sort of that straight acting male that, um, yeah, that, that's taken me out of my comfort zone and sort of out of, you know, it's quite different from my own personality. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. And you're the, telling us you're not a nasty piece of work in <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> try and get that across. Yes, I do you get a big slap <laughs> around the face as well. But uh, but yeah, I the think mu- he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, the music's beautiful. Obviously, it's written by the same people as the Great Showman. So there's some really beautiful stuff in there, and I think that that as as well as all the characters, it, it's a really it's a really fantastic show. One of my favourite shows, in fact. So. Okay, you love it, and you're in it, which helps. Yeah, definitely. okay. Let's meet the rest of the game because somebody over here seems to have pretty much the the, the cut for the army look already. <laughs> How's it going with that? Is it cold? It's cold and it slips off very easily. Yeah, this is the hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not trying to balance anything else on your head, are you? <laughs> not yet. Your book yet. carrying duties have gone down rapidly since. Yeah, and a couple of pints in, who knows? <laughs> but tell us about your character and, and, and his bit in the show. So, my character, Boland, is um, sort of the lad's lad, so he focuses very much on egging the other guys on. So, so you're typecast because you look the type. Well, mm. you know, I could have said the same about you. Too, <laughs> I'm not, you should I'm join not. the show. <laughs> But it, it's 
it's it's fun to play that sometimes, isn't it? And it it definitely is, and I think it's got some real gritty parts. So he goes from being a lad's lad into sort of almost this aggressive monster that actually the lads actually step in on in the end so it's you know it's a really challenging role to play mm-hmm. joined by some fantastic um, actors and actresses on the stage um, and so, James and James <laughs> James is alright as well yeah. yeah so no it's been been a good experience and uh, how do you feel about your part and uh, have you got any pivotal moments in the story you can share a hint of um, yeah in terms of my character she's very um she knows what she's going in for, but I think as it kind of starts to get a bit more aggressive with Boland, it, it gets quite serious. And that's something, again, I've not played before, so it's quite interesting to, to get that serious moment with him and different parts in the show and being very um, stereotypical, like, on the street. It, it, it's very interesting, but it's also slightly terrifying because mm-hmm. sometimes it's kind of like you're in that moment and it'd be really nice to see the audience kind of see that moment as well. Um, there's a pivotal time in the show where uh, it, he kind of gets really aggressive with me and like throws my kind of face, not not in a serious way, everyone's safe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and that for me is like a, a big scary moment in, in terms of the character and how you kind of see the change in her and she gets very angry at the world and obviously speaks to Rose. So um, yeah, something really different but, but very exciting and... and It'd be really nice for the people to see it. So it's just just an amazing show. Really yeah. excited. Well, with the watch, we transported to uh, a, a night before the boys head off to uh, Vietnam and are uh, you know, celebrating their last moment of freedom before Uncle Sam brings them under his wing, give or take everything else that goes with it. Who's going to tell me where we can get tickets from? Who's volunteering for that one? <laughs> Nobody. Tickets <laughs> yeah, tickets oh, no, no, let me put the microphone at you first. <laughs> Um, there is a link via Ticket Source and there is a QR code on all of our posters on social media. And we can find that by searching for? Big Three Productions. And the, you can do the dates again? From the 30th of May to the 1st of June. And anything else we need to know? What time's the show's up and is there a matinee any date? There's no matinee, but shows are from half seven. There we go. <laughs> that, that, did, did, is that anything else you can think of? Bar available, order interval drinks now. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think so. No, okay, we're checking it all out. Go along, see them. They're a good bunch. They're a great uh, a gang. It's going to be some uh, amazing songs in the show, as we say. Some brilliant characters to explore, and let's say they're all a nice lot. Whatever they appear to be on stage, it'll be it'll be good. You'll enjoy. It. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Muscom are in action with Rock of Ages at the Dormston Theatre from the 5th through to the 8th of June. I have four of their number with me now to tell us what's going on. Hello, gang. Hello. Hello. Right, we'll start that end with uh, introductions and character names, please. Uh, David, Reader, and I'm playing Hertz. Uh, I'm Zach, and I play Lonnie. I am Mike, and I'm playing Stacey Jacks. And I'm Jess, and I'm playing Jackie Gill. See, there's, there's a few that are surprises in there for me, a few that aren't. To be fair, it's got to be Stacey Jacks, hasn't it? But there we go. So uh, it's obviously a, a big show, big songs, and I'm checking none of you are old enough to remember them first time round, are you? Oh, no, no, I'm very young, me. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah, no, you but... might remember some of them the first time. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm 20 years old. And the rest. Um, <laughs> so uh, when, when it comes to a show like this, though, it's, it's one which is, uh, it, it's been performed a number of times, but you get to put your own mark on it, really, don't you? I mean, uh, what, what's your favourite bit of bringing the show to life? I think mine is getting the character right, because I play a German businessman, so like getting the accent right and getting that sorted, so that's one thing. And also my role with my co-part, sorry, I suppose, isn't it? You know, my son in the, yeah. in the fart, that bouncing off ideas and stuff like that but that's the thing I've really enjoyed but who gets to be your son? Uh, Logan his name's Logan so yeah he's a new member isn't he? he's a lovely little actor our Logan yeah a lovely little actor yeah, yeah. yeah. so that, that, that's going to be worth seeing yeah and um, the, the outfits I mean you have a good outfit I mean my, my outfit is boring compared to the girls um, the girls have got some great outfits or lack thereof <laughs> um, so yeah if, if there's lots of uh, we'll, we'll say stuff for the dads yeah, it's going to be entertaining okay and as, as Stacey Jacks I mean this is an interesting challenge for you can you rise to it yeah absolutely um, it has been a challenge um, but I absolutely love this show and I think that that's what carries it through you know throughout the rehearsal process you know it's just so fast paced um, and I think Stacey's character is absolutely wild um, so that has been nothing but fun to play and is it going to affect your facial hair in any way have you got to, have you got to alter yourself for this right? <laughs> well the moustache is going to stay I think um, but it's not going to affect my facial hair but my hair actually might look a little bit different for this one which is very exciting there's, there's going to be a lot more of it yes absolutely couldn't do the show without it I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed he hasn't grown it out what do you reckon you should have done that <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, there we go so uh, what else have we got in store I mean we talked about outfits what do you get to be oh um, well mine's quite um, serious I've got like a suit and I'm quite a serious character so yeah yeah a, a suit but, uh, but still yeah, showing a stern side that's, it's not really you is it you've got a proper acting here because you're, you're normally too sweet and kind yeah I'm, I'm normally quite a, a, a a nice actor, but um, uh, my character's quite bipolar in this. Um, I have to be quite a bit of a... don't want to say the word, but I'm a bit of a B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not not to, typecast. Uh, to Drew, no. no. <laughs> OK, then, we'll work on favourite songs then. We'll get to start back this end. So, because uh, it's, it's a show about the music, isn't yeah. it? So, uh, what's, what's your favourite tune? I think my favourite tune is The Final Countdown. I think that... Second act opens the show, and it's one of my favourites. Yeah, it's, it's a big song, yeah. and you've got to do something special with it, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, And I think the, the sort of the dancing and all that, and the way it's been set has been brilliant as well. So yeah, I'd say final countdown. Okay, you, uh, obviously from the jukebox from when you grew up as a kid, you heard all these songs. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. No, my favourite has got to be "Don't Stop Believing," mm-hmm. closing song. I mean, I'd, 
Yeah, definitely. Best, yeah, on, yeah. best yeah. on the show, maybe. And you, just because you get to you belt it out, everyone has a good time. I mean, to be fair, Liam and Laura do most of the singing on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, which they're, they're great vocalists, uh, uh, Liam and Laura, uh, as, as are all the cast. Um, but yeah, they take the lead on that song, but it's, it's iconic. Okay. Many songs you don't get to sing in, or yeah. um, so actually, weirdly, Stacey doesn't have that many songs. Um, oh. so, <laughs> cheeky bugger. Um, but one of my favourite songs is actually one that I'm not in, which is "Pour Some Sugar on Me," mm-hmm. which is just the girls' choreography that Kimmy, um, our wonderful producer, has just thought up is just amazing, and you sort of leave in that number going, oh, "Wow." Um, so yeah, that's my favourite one. Okay. Mine's the opening. Yep. So you, don't, you like to start the show. Oh, yeah. It's all downhill from, from there for you. No, no, it's all amazing, <laughs> but I love the opening number. Really love it. Okay. So it's going to be uh, a show which put a lot of pressure on. How many are involved in this this time around? Does anyone know numbers? I think it's just over thirty, maybe. And all on stage. Uh, pretty much most of the show. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be absolutely massive. Uh, big costumes, a great theatre to perform in as well, because that's, that's the good thing about Dormston, isn't it? You, you, it's, it is a, a full-on theatre. But um, what's, what's the saddest moment for you? Because there's obviously the stress around the bar and all that sort of stuff. What's, what's the worst bit, again, that you do, but, but still turns around into a magical musical moment? I'm gonna, go on, you go first. The saddest yeah, moment on, in I'm the show. Sad bit. I want a sad bit. I'm going to... That there's a bit where Drew and Sherry don't think they like each other and they go separate ways. So you kind of see the love story just get close mm-hmm. and then it gets broken up. That's that's probably the saddest bit in the show. Yeah, and you've got some father and son moments which don't go quite good to plan. Yes, I think there's a bit where I play and then there's a really sad moment where I, I think I've lost my son. But yeah, I don't give too much away. But yeah, it's, uh, that's a probably sad moment for my character. Uh, and uh, anything for you two? Um, the, probably the, the moment that hits you in the feels a little bit is there's a moment and I'm not going to give too much away in Every Rose Has Its Thorn where we're all on stage and the way it's been done is just so like oh it's beautiful okay yeah, and I would agree with yeah, you yeah. just go with that you just, yeah, yeah. that's touch yeah. a moment that, that, that works okay so tickets uh, who's head of telling us where we can get tickets that's right okay, okay. Uh, we have so a volunteer go to CT and it's Muscom and you can get them on there they're £20 a ticket and please buy them because this is an amazing show. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's already selling well. Yeah. Yeah. We, want yeah. the, we want every seat in the house yeah. full so yes. everyone can get on their feet please. when they need yeah. to. Yes, please buy. It's amazing. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. It's just yeah. amazing. But well, most come are amazing. Going to do a brilliant job of it. Have a great time. Break a leg. You know, false nails, hair, all that lot of stuff. Keep it glued on in the right places. Me. Yeah, just you, <laughs> just you and the nails. Yeah. But have a, have a great time with it and look forward to seeing the show. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's plenty going on stage at the Stafford Gatehouse, including their forthcoming Shakespeare Festival. To tell us more about quite what's going on and how excited he is about Christmas already, I'm joined now by Keith Harrison. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Hello, young man. How are you? Oh, we're all good here. And I, I take it you're jolly excited because you've got a, a mutual friend returning to your stage. Yes, the brilliant Mark Rhodes, Walsall's finest, Jason. Walsall's <laughs> finest. Uh, pride of the backcountry. Big Wolves fan, does a lot for Wolves Mm -hmm. uh, and his community work as well, does Mark. And uh, yeah, he's returning this year because he was in Beauty and the Beast, our record-breaking pantomime from uh, last year. And we've signed him up again. So we're absolutely delighted to have him back for Jack and the Beanstalk this year. Uh, And already advanced ticket sales were so big for it that we've extended the run because Last year, we had 18,500 people in for the show over the course of three weeks. Mm-hmm. And this year, the target was set for 20,000, uh, which would be an all-time record at the Gatehouse again. Um, but when we sat down and looked at it, we, we figured out that even if we sold out every performance, there's no way we could still fit 20,000 people in. So we've added uh, an extra week at the start of the run. So it now starts on December the 6th, runs through to January the 5th. Yeah, and Mark is going to be in it. And I've seen pictures of the set, and it, it is incredible. It's, it's just going to be spectacular. Now, now uh, what is uh, Mark's role in all of this? 
Well, do you know what? I asked this the other day and they don't know because the script is still being written. Uh, it's written by Eric Potts, big, mm -hmm. uh, big award winning script writer and a well-known friend of the Gatehouse in this parish. And um, it, it's still being written. I suspect Mark is going to be Jack. So I'll just say, I, I don't know bit, for certain. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. He's not going to be the pantomime cow anyway. He's not going to be the back end of the cow. Well, so, I, see, yeah, I think he'd uh... enjoy that as well. He's, he'll just do anything on Mark. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like that. He'll muck in wherever required. But it's going to be a good one. And, uh, of course, there's, there's plenty to come between now and then. We're not just thinking about Christmas. But now is the time to book the seats that you want as well. So you can see where you want to be in the uh, auditorium. Uh, if you get in there early as you can for that, particularly now we've got the extra week added on the front end, uh, you can uh, make sure you can sneak in and see it before everybody else. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Here we are this week in Stafford and the sun is shining. We're getting, finally getting a bit of nice weather. Um, but I was just looking at the figures and again, every day people are booking the pantomime. So it's one of those things whereby if you book now, as you say, Jason, you get the, the choice of the best seats. And it's something you don't need to worry about when you come towards Christmas and, you know, you start thinking about buying presents and all the rest of them and the, the bills start clocking up. If you've done it now, you've got it out of the way. You've nothing to worry about. You've just got yourself, you know, you've got a great night booked in. Absolutely. And uh, wouldn't you, you spend that bit of cash your next bit you save up for a little treat for yourself? You can put into something like the Shakespeare Festival. Exactly. You're doing my job for me. Eh? You're fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's one of the two big things that we have in the year, really, is we have the Shakespeare in the summer and we have the pantomime at the end of the year. And the Shakespeare now, again, the set is taking shape. Uh, they're coming in for uh, the cast have already got the script. So they're already working out and see Sean Walsh. Uh, he was on the Katie Piper show last week talking about it. He's gonna and, and be on excuse me, he's been on, been on my show as well. And I was gonna say he's been on your show as well. He's got all the big ones sort of done. He's got the full <laughs> full works, the hat trick. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he's a lovely guy, and it's his first Shakespeare players. I think he was explaining to you, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. that it's his first time doing Shakespeare, which you know is not easy. I think when you look at the language, if you're not sort of brought up with it. It's not easy, but he's taking to it like a duck to water from the rehearsal clips that I've seen. And uh, yeah, we're, so we're absolutely delighted. But it's not just it's not just Sean. We've got Molly Windsor. She's on TV at the moment in Traces on the BBC. She was in Cheat and ITV One. She won the BAFTA for Three Girls a couple of years ago. She's fantastic. And of course, we've got Natalie Anderson, who's lovely and brilliant. She's in Netflix Fool Me Once, which I think I read somewhere has been Netflix's biggest drama show for something like five, ten years in the UK. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's fantastic. And then come and see Natalie at the Gatehouse this summer. Well, absolutely uh, brilliant stuff to be seen on stage. It's going to be an absolute treat. But there's plenty of other great shows in between, aren't there? There are indeed. And a, a couple I particularly want to flag up to you. Um, with this Wednesday uh, coming up, we've got uh, the Sir Tom Jones songbook. Uh, which is, a, I mean, Sir Tom, who doesn't like Sir Tom Jones? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I've got a special offer just for you and your listeners, Jason, because this, this isn't out there everywhere. But if you want no tickets for this, we, you can do a two for one. So if you put in the code Sir Tom 241 um, when you come to the checkout, as you ring the box office, you'll get two tickets for one there, which would be absolutely fantastic. I think it's like, that works out at something like £13 a ticket for a big, big stage show. So that's going to be fantastic. That's on the, that's on Wednesday night, the 22nd. And then on the, um, uh, on the next Saturday, we've got somebody from the heart of the black country improv wolves i don't know if you've ever come across the improv wolves i i know mr lane very well i've known him for, for years go there you go yeah well uh, we've got them on on saturday night and if you like improv these guys are probably the best improv troupe around yeah uh, they're absolutely hilarious they're local guys so i bet they've got loads of local references to throw in there as well um and they're on saturday night and we had a, a couple of months back we had the importance of being earnest which was an improv take on <clears throat> on that Oscar Wilde play, um, and the the audiences absolutely loved it. So I'm sure improv wolves on Saturday night is going to go down just as well um, mm. uh, with the audiences here. And again, it's not it's not an expensive night out. Come along and give the guys a watch. I guarantee you'll have a great time. And you can even help guide the way the comedy goes with a few suggestions as you head through the show. So that's going to be worthwhile uh, being part of that. And they're a great bunch. There's like a pool of them, and, and Rob's normally there pretty much every time. And there's the rest of the gang, and they are just fab. What else you got for us? Well, if, if um, 
we're coming to the end of term, aren't we? We're coming to the end of term. All the schools are winding down and they're, mm-hmm. they're doing their exams and whatnot. And on Friday night, we've got a guy called Kevin Precious. Uh, Kevin was a, a teacher for many years. And uh, you always think that your teachers must have some great stories down the years of the kids that they, they dealt with. I know mine probably do. And um, so, yeah, he, we've got Kevin Precious on. He's now, he's now left teaching to be a stand-up comedian. And he mm-hmm. talks about the joys of teaching. And the show's called The Reluctant Teacher. He was an RE teacher, would you believe? And uh, he's got long hair and a beard. So, of course, the kids nicknamed him Jesus straight away. And uh, and off he goes. But he's absolutely hilarious. So if you're a teacher, uh, you can relate to everything you've got going on with the, your kids, the parents, their teacher, Ofsted, all these things. And he's absolutely hilarious. He goes down really well. There's not many tickets left for that, I have to say, because it's gone, it's gone really well. But that's on uh, this Friday night, uh, the 24th. Um, and then here's another treat for you. Following on next week, uh, we've got Kevin Quantum. Now, Kevin was a scientist in, uh, in Edinburgh, mm. and he packed up to become a, a magician because his passion was really for illusions and magicians. And he was actually trained by Penn and Teller, the great Penn and Teller oh, over wow. in America. Um, and eventually, cut a long story short, he ended up on Britain's Got Talent a couple of years ago, and mm-hmm. his clips on Britain's Got Talent. He got Anton Deck involved. He got Simon Cowell involved. It was absolutely fantastic. I think he finished fourth. Um, but since then, he's been all over the world. He's become a global phenomenon. He's, he's down in Australia. He's big in America, Canada, all over the place. Uh, so Kevin is on, on May the 23rd. And again... I think, uh, sorry, on, on Bank Holiday, May the 27th, Bank Holiday Monday, mm-hmm. he's on um, at 7.30. And again, because it's Bank Holiday Monday and tickets have gone quite well, we're doing a two-for-one offer on it. So, um, again, the code there is Kevin241. And I think tickets from that, well, if you do that, if there's a couple of you coming along, it'll be £12.50 each. You can't get anything for £12.50 these days. No, so you get a great easy. night out. At the theatre, seeing Kevin Quantum, big star off the TV. And I, I guarantee, you, again, I've seen some of his tricks on YouTube. Look him up on YouTube because he's one of these guys you look at and you go, how? Yeah. How does he do that? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely, absolutely fantastic that uh, uh, we've got Kevin next week. It'd be but brilliant. That's going to be good. Okay, you've got Trouble on Volcano Island as well. That's on the 28th for half term. And Milkshake Live, they're along on the 29th. And then another big name uh, appearing on your stage, Marty Wilde. Now, I was having a chat with him Marty about this Wilde. tour a few weeks back. And he, he's a lovely fellow. I've spoken to him a few times over the years. And he's there with his wild cats. And that's going to be memorable on May the 30th. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Kim Wilde's dad. I mean, you know, you're obviously the older than me, Jason. You remember I, Marty Wilde. I'm aware of his work. Uh, I'm not older than you. Uh, <laughs> and I do remember Kim Wilde particularly well. In fact, when we were doing the call, uh, obviously he name dropped his daughter. Oh, yeah, Kim popped round to sort the Zoom out for me earlier. So, you yeah, know, it, it's really cool. They're, not, they're, they're a lovely family. So uh, that, that was uh, worth doing. But, uh, but that's going to be an absolutely amazing gig as well, isn't it? That is going to be fantastic. And again, selling really well, Marty Wilde. Um, I think there's a huge audience still for, for shows like that because you know, he, he's just such a big name and he's got so many hits. And, and to be still going at his age and still going strong, mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we're really pleased to have uh, Marty with us. And then we've got, uh, uh, again, following on from that, on the 31st of May, one of my favourite acts of all time, uh, Simon and Garfunkel. We've got a Simon and Garfunkel act on uh, through the years. I was brought up on Simon and Garfunkel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, thankfully, I've got my kids brought up on Simon and Garfunkel now because, for me, they're just absolutely superb, Paul Simon. And, um, yeah, that, that's on May the 31st, so that's going to be another big one. And then into June, Emilio Santoro as Elvis. Now, there's lots of Elvis impersonators out there. We know that, you know, you, some are good, some are not so good, uh, depending where you go. But this guy... He is absolutely fantastic. He's won. He's won. He's been over to um, Memphis in America. He's won awards over there. His show is absolutely top draw. If you're an Elvis fan, and who isn't? Mm-hmm. If you're an Elvis fan, that one is is a night not to be missed because I I guarantee you you'll come away blown away by him. He, he looks like it. You know the film, the guy who was in the film recently, and he looks yeah. just like him. Emilio looks just like him as well, and he's got all the moves and the, the voice, and, and he 
he's just fantastic. Um, that's yeah. Emilio Santoro as Elvis, June the 1st. That's going to be good. Right, we'll, have, we'll stop there for now as we've made it into June. There's going to yes. be loads of things to see. It's gatehousetheatre.co.uk or give the box office a call 01785 619080 and uh, you can uh, book your tickets. Don't forget those online offers for Sir Tom, two for one, and Kevin, two for one, if you're booking those up. But uh, loads happening. It's it's all good to look forward to. I'm particularly looking forward to the, uh, uh, the, the Shakespeare Festival for now. Keith Harrison from the Stafford Gatehouse. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jace. Starstruck Theatre are at the Dormston at Mill Theatre with Joseph and his amazing technical dream coat, a full-on wardrobe of magic taking place down there from the 23rd through to the 26th of May. Now, we're going to meet, I think, almost all the brothers. I'm not going to count as we go along. We'll, we'll work it out as it happens. But we'll start with Joseph himself. Hello. Hello. You're Ethan. Yes, that's right. So you've got an exciting time ahead? Yes, I'm uh, really looking forward to it. Um, but well, your brothers have already started taking the mic because they want you in your pants just to do the interview. Yes, uh, I was a good group of brothers, I'll say that much. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, this is the biggest challenge for you, is the fact that you've got to stand there in a loincloth half the night. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I have practised in my bedroom a bit, but you know... Uh, nice Posing to, in front of the mirror. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to bring it to the stage too a bit as well. And do you think the world is ready for this? We shall see. OK, we'll find out with the rest. Yeah. Have, you, have you had to do a dress rehearsal at all as yet? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. I've done a couple of photo shoots, but that's about it. Okay, so, yeah. but excited? Yeah, very. Look, really looking forward to it, yeah. Okay, well, you get to come and stand over here now, and we'll bring uh, a brother or two in. So you can tell us which brother we're bringing next and who they are. This is going to be a fun quiz, isn't it? Okay, so so who who have we got next in line over here? There. Uh, that is Tristan. Tristan, come in, Tristan. Okay, we've done well so far. And, and, and who is he playing? Pass. Okay, Tristan, who are you playing? Playing Gad. Okay, that, no, that's a good brother to get, isn't it? Gad. Yeah, t- t- tell us how you in, in bring him to life. Well, I think Gad's really a tragic character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's personal. Yeah. I don't want it, 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 to. I wouldn't go too much it. to cope with. I, in one I don't think about it. Yeah, so, but it's all for your art, isn't but it? But it's, yeah. it's, you know, uh, Gad. Yeah. Gad. Yeah, but there's some good musical numbers. This, yeah. Um, I think Kane and Days were some of it. Yeah. I also share it with my friends and and, and and the people you don't particularly like as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's always there's always conflict within companies. I mean it's okay. <laughs> Star- I love Starstruck Star- 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 a lovely bunch of aren't they? Yes, I do genuinely love everybody here. They're okay. really cool. It's well we will let you move to this side and then we'll bring in another brother. Who have we got next? Uh who we've we've got Martin. Martin, we well, know he's Martin, Martin. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's playing. Pass. Okay, another one we're not sure on. It'd be, it'd be better with costumes, and he'll know then, won't he? Yeah, I'm playing Levi. Okay, Levi, yes. And uh, what is uh, specific about Levi for you? How are you bringing Ooh. that channel to the? So I'm, I'm singing one more Angel Evan to, yeah. of course, Jacob, our dad, uh, yeah. to explain that. Obviously, Jaws has died, mm-hmm. um, and of course, we're spoilers. all happy about it. So yes, it's been a couple of thousand there years, go, but yes. still spoilers. <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah, I just feel like we're the brothers for support, really. So okay. We find, should we find another brother? Are you ready for the next yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. On. Um, this is this is Craig. Okay, Craig. Craig, um, come in, Craig. And who's Craig playing? Uh, one of my brothers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is shown real. Uh, Craig, who are you in the show? So in the play, I uh, play Naptali. Mm-hmm. Now that's, uh, that's difficult to spell. Um, yes, uh, it is. That's difficult to spell. It's N-A-P-H-T-A-L-I. Round of applause sure? for everyone. Come on, please. <laughs> and uh, what's his trait? What, what do we know about him? So Natalie's sort of in the middle brother um, and it just sort of blends in a little bit really. You know, um, he's quite a character, he's quite a comical character, a lot of, char- you know, a lot of comedy with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it, yeah, generally, yeah. That'll do, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you move over here and we'll get the next one in. Who have you got this time? Uh, this is uh, another Martin. Uh, and, 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 and just to make, make room for him so we can still see everybody. Okay, and uh, this Martin is playing, he's trying to mouth answers to you here. Gad. Gad, no. No, Dan. We've had, we've had Dan. Gad. We've had Gad. Dan. Yeah. yeah. Dan, there Dan. we go. It's s- same number of syllables. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, tell us about Dan. I took Dan to be the sort of dopiest of the brothers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's more facial actions for Dan. He sort of tries to be the backup of the family. Right. Emotional, comedic. 
whatever they need, he's there for them. So there's a lot of comedy in all the brothers here, aren't there? I like they? to think so, yeah. More in the body actions and the face and things are. Like. So it's proper acting, isn't yeah, it? And, and have you grown the beard for the part? Or yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. I really hate it. Yeah. It's, it's so it's, itchy. It's working, though. I can't have a pot noodle in peace. <laughs> well, you, but you can. You just eat it for the rest of the day. I can't have to eat it sort of like... <laughs> yeah, you just it'll be there with you forever. Okay, well, that's all cool. Right, we're getting quite crowded on this side. We'll let you go wherever you want to go, just out of the way. Uh, and we'll bring the, bring the next, next one in. Who have you got? Uh, this is... LJ, LJ, that's good. We've got uh, the important, really important. But who he's in real life? I, d- I did, I did know it just, but it's, I'm, I'm trying to think of the song you see. We're not going to get there. Jude off. Close enough. Judah. 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 And but, I mean, obviously, a, another brother with coat envy, which is always an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. He he gets the rub of the green, and we we you know left to. We, 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 fed, we fed the scraps. Mm-hmm. Bit of a nightmare, really, isn't it? It is a little bit, yeah. Yeah, no, times are going to probably turn sour if I remember the story correctly. So it's not going to work out brilliant for any of the brothers at some point. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are, are you going to be able to bring that, you know, with, with, with your look, the way you feel about all I, of this? I hope so. Um, there's a critical point in the, in, in, in the musical where um, Judah is called upon mm-hmm. for musical services. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, I guess you'll have to wait and see whether they're successful. But you can successful. rise to that, can't you? Oh, of course, yeah. I bring a bit of je ne sais quoi, you yeah. know, to, to, <laughs> the, to the party and, and hopefully, you know, yeah, everything ends well. Well, hopefully your brother Joseph will be able to remember who you are at the, at the time, which would be good. Um, I'd like that, yeah. That'd be, be great. Nice. That'd yeah. be great. Okay, right, okay. But you, you can come and take a seat or lurk in a corner. Right, next up, introductions, please. This is Tom. Tom, right. Tom is my youngest brother. Yeah. And he is playing Benjamin. So is he technically younger than you in this? Pass. He's still got about a foot on you, so we'll see how this works out. Okay, so uh, Benjamin, obviously, yeah, Benjamin. They're, they're maligned, um, you know, difficult times, yeah. hidden cups, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've got a bit of a challenge to try and look innocent whilst being yeah, someone tries to make you look guilty. Yeah, no, yeah, I would say he's like one of the most innocent brothers mm-hmm. in the thing, like you'll say. He's um he tries to start out of trouble, but obviously he does get in a bit of trouble. It's the family. Around. I reckon it's the rest yeah. of them, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then you have got an upstart like Joseph as well. Yeah. Makes it difficult. Yeah. And, and musically, anything that stands out for you there? Um, not really. No. No. Really. Okay, that's fine. Did you, yeah. did you like the show anyway? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously. That's okay. Yeah. Over there now. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we haven't quite run out yet. Still a few more. Who've you got now? No. This is Deb. Okay, Deb. Hi, um, Deb. Hello. Come and join us. Deb is a, another brother. Yeah. But may require much more stick on facial hair than some of the others. Yes. Yes. Just a, just a tiny bit. Just okay. I'd like bit. to have a shave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It looks wonderful. Thank so, you. So who are you? I'm Reuben. Yeah. I'm, I play the oldest brother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, obviously, as you can see, I'm... Um, a lady brother. A lady brother, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, we, we live in a world where that, 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 that's not perfectly normal. It's 2024, you know, after all. But yeah, I'm the oldest brother. I am, um, again, co- comedy-wise, it's just uh, gets into a bit of trouble. Mm-hmm. Um not really the leader of the pack, but sort of gets pushed into being the leader at some point during the show. But yeah, it's a fun, fun role to play. Are you going it's to be nice, with, yeah? nice to uh, play something different. It is a, bit, a, bit, a complete change. Completely, yeah. Okay, right, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, no Next. worries. Who have we got? How many more? Because I'm still spotting some more people over here. Right, we've got... Uh, yeah, we've got another... Three. three. three yeah, three. Of, yeah, so, so... Okay, so who's this? Uh, I did though. I did though. No, forget. come on. Oh, that's so rude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really bad. No, you haven't got a clue, have you? No. Okay. What's your name? I'm, I'm Alice. 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 I have been for the year he's known me. I was going to say Lisa. It's a good job I didn't say. Anything. I was Lisa in Dagenham. That, that's what oh, confuses him. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. you brought those parts to life so well. So he well. believes you're the character. That's it. So that, that's what it is. Here. So who are you going to be this time? I am playing Zebulon. Um, one of the middle pack of the brothers. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what is? I mean, Zebulon is not one of those names that stands out. I mean, Benjamin does, Judah does, well, but it's got a Z in it. It did well in Countdown. Well, yeah, they, uh, and Scrabble. There's great Scrabble score for that. So, uh, other than being worth points, what are, what are the prizes in the role? I mean, it's 
It's nice to play something a little bit different. Again, my previous roles with Starstruck have been women, although mm -hmm. I have played men in the past, mm -hmm. and on one memorable occasion, a plant. So uh, it's it's just nice to do a show that I grew up loving. So uh, it's, it's an amazing show, though, isn't it? Yeah. So that, that's good. Really, really it's one of those sing-along shows. Yes. But if you're in the audience, don't. They're exactly. going to do it on stage. OK, right, we'll, we'll meet somebody else whose name you probably can't remember. OK, Ethan, we're going to put you to the test again. We've got another one coming in. He didn't dress for the occasion, but he's here. No, he didn't, yeah. Oh, we're going to keep Ben. Ben. Is it Ben? It is Ben. Okay, and... But uh, the brother's name is not Ben, but you no, won't do, know do, do, do you know... Th <laughs> no, any... Why do you, why do you have to ask? <laughs> I like making you it, look... It's a given. <laughs> right, okay, so who are you on the show, please, sir? Uh, well, actually, I'm uh, I'm playing dual roles. I'm playing the Izakar, which is one of the brothers, Um Kind of one of the background brothers, uh, but I'm also playing the Pharaoh. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I've got to get my Elvis on, which is. Uh, I mean, that, cool. that, it's, that's a good gig again. Is your facial hair for this role? Uh, no, no. Out? This is this you is, look like this that normally. Me. Well, because we we only came up recently with the idea to to leave it on. Uh, yeah. Because they were going to make me shave it to play the Pharaoh, and then Stick wear a fake on. one oh, for right, the yeah. brother role. So. Yeah, that was a. Luckily, we've decided that it's going to look better if I play a naff Elvis. Well, but you could wear an unbeard. I mean, I remember you probably did not older from a Kenny Everett, but he did a character which I won't say the name of. But he had to <laughs> stick on facial cover, so that that could work. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I remember the character well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not for this, obviously. I'll tell you all later. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's, uh, that that could work. But yeah, but, but have, you, have you got like a full on Elvis in effect when it comes? To, are you going to be doing something with the quiff? Uh, no, we, we've got. We've got a wig. Okay. We've, got, we've got a wig because uh, we, we've kind of done it because he is a, an Elvis impersonator rather than Elvis himself. Yeah. So we thought it'd be quite funny to leave the beard on and look like a really naff Elvis impersonator. But Obviously, tail end well, Elvis, yeah. not not the seventies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's going to be good, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. Next, if you got so there's two more. We decided two more. This one's got branded T-shirt and everything. So <laughs> turn around. Turn around. Is it his name on the back? <laughs> He's not cheating. <laughs> Come on. It's really bad. I, I know them all as well. Yeah, I know. And you've got to... You remember the scenes where they have to try and pretend to beat you yes, up a bit? Yeah, they will yeah, do it. Yeah, that. They're going to actually, actually kick you, they? haven't they? been pretending. They haven't been doing it. Well, it's, they'll be just... <laughs> probably just damaging yeah, no, we go. No, I do know it. <laughs> I do know it. So it's, shall, it's, shall it's, I ask him? No, so I do know it. It's yeah. Dan. It's Dan. See, it just takes me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's at least 20. Okay, Dan, tell us about who you are on the show, because again, he's not going to have a clue. Yeah, I'm playing the second oldest brother, Simeon. Mm -hmm. um, probably the better looking brother out of all of them, to be fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, just more comical and a bit of singing and dancing and fooling around, really. Yeah. And that's going to be part of the fun. Yeah, oh yes. Uh, fa your favourite bit of the show? My favourite bit? Yeah, kicking him. Oh, yeah, yeah, giving him a good kick in. Uh, probably one more angel. That's, that's oh, that is a good tune. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. It's a good bit in it. Yeah, oh, everyone yeah. comes together for that one. Except, yeah, yeah, except, yeah. yeah. So that's all good. Right. Okay. So you have got one more. Are you going to be able to remember their name? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. They are. I knew them all really. I yeah, was right. Just, <laughs> just acting. This is comedy effect, is it? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need to work on that. I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Who, who we got? This is Aaron. Oh. Yeah. And Aaron is playing a brother. Yes. <laughs> one that's taller than you. Again, yes. with another finely resplendent beard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No more than that. No, no. not a clue. Who are you playing today? I'm Asher. The middle child. So that's middle child syndrome is real. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it is. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I. This is my first show I've ever done. I'm normally backstage, so it's quite uh, unique for is me it, and daunting. Very. But is it the beard that got you gig gig this time? I mean, that... No, no, this is, this is actually for the... the this oh, yeah, okay, I've right. never had a beard in my life. This is the this first is a time. whole lot of new things yeah, for you, isn't it? Is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very uncomfortable. Very out of my comfort zone with this one. But um, yeah, give it a go. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, hope so. Okay, right, I thought if you'd like to make your way, Ethan's going to make his way back here. Then he's going to give us all the details on where we can get tickets because he's done so well at remembering things. Yes, yeah, so you can get them from CT at www.ct. Co. Dot uk slash Joseph. Yeah. Um, Joseph. J O S E P H. He can read as well. Yeah. Not uh, really. No. Not, not well. Dyslexia kicks in sometimes. That's, that's never good. Yeah. And uh, there's a phone number as well, but it's not the one on our poster. Is it's it, not so? the one on the poster. So you, and check, I do not know it. That's terrible. What you do? It check is. out Starstruck on Facebook. They'll be on there as well. But I mean, everybody, break a leg, have a great time, and uh, I think everyone's looking forward to the show from yes. the 23rd through to the 26th of May at the Dumpster Mill. Thank you all. Thank you.
That's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me back with episode 779 next week. I'll see you then. Ta-ra for now. Goodbye from the mill bar. 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 Yeah. Goodbye from the mill bar. Yeah.